Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to discuss the nucleus. So today's essential question, what holds the nucleus together and determines nuclear stability? Okay, so quick overview, little reminder of the nucleus. The nucleus is at the center of the atom, and it contains both the protons and the neutrons. All right, um, before we move on, let me draw my really ugly picture again. I'm just going to draw over the writing. I'll get rid of it. So we've got the nucleus in orange, and then, if you guys remember, the electron cloud, oh, like all like this, okay? So the yellow is the electron cloud. Okay, let me get, get rid of this stuff. All right. Um, so from my drawing, you can see that the nucleus is a really small part of the atom which means that the protons and neutrons are smooshed together really, really tight in a really small space. And further, recall that the protons and the neutrons are actually quite large compared to the size of the electron, who gets all the space. So this tight packing results in what we call a small, dense, meaning there's really not any empty space, it's a really tightly packed nucleus. So the nucleus is small and it's dense. And that's really important. And that brings us to strong nuclear force. All right, remember that protons are positive. Um, and that means they should repel each other. Like charges don't like each other. They, sh they repel. I mean, they don't just don't like each other. They actually hate each other. Two positives are going to just try to get away from each other as fast as possible. So think about it. The nucleus is packed tightly with all these positive charges. The nucleus should fly apart. However, there's another force. It's called the strong nuclear force that holds the nucleus together. And this force is stronger than the force that repels the positive charges. And this allows the nucleus to hold together. Okay, so what is the strong nuclear force? Well, a neutron, the neutrons are a big part of this strong nuclear force, okay? They act kind of like glue. Not perfectly, but they're kind of like glue holding the protons in place. Okay, so they're, they're packed in there with the protons, and you can think of, think of them as almost sticking them together. So as the protons are trying to pull apart from each other, the, the, the neutrons are holding them in place. So this force, this strong nuclear force, um, is stronger than the force that repels the positive charges. That allows the nucleus to hold together. All right, let's now talk about nuclear stability. Almost all of the atoms that you encounter in life have a stable nuclei, okay? And the stable nucleus is one in which the strong nuclear force is stronger than the repulsion of the protons, so the nucleus holds together. In an unstable nucleus, the, the nucleus is actually going to kind of fly apart, hopefully in a controlled manner. Okay. So what keeps these two forces in appropriate balance? The force that want, of repelling positive charges where they don't like each other, and the strong nuclear force. Well, you need to have a good balance of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Not too many neutrons and not too few. So if you don't have enough neutrons, you're going to end up with not enough glue. If you have too many neutrons, the nucleus is going to be too tight. It's not going to be able to hold it all together and the nucleus is going to fly apart. So you, can, you can't have too many subatomic particles all together um, or the, the nucleus is going to be just too crowded. All right, next up, stable and unstable nuclei. So elements with atomic numbers of 1 through 20 are very stable. Okay, so that's going to include all of these guys here, hydrogen all the way through to calcium. Okay, and this is because if you look at the periodic table and look at the numbers of protons and neutrons, you'll notice that they, there's a good equal number of protons and neutrons. Um, there aren't too many protons. They all, none of them, the most is 20 protons. Um, there's about equal numbers of neutrons. There's just enough glue to hold all those protons together and not so much that you're getting an overcrowded nucleus. 
Okay. Elements with atomic numbers of 21 through 82 are somewhat stable. Okay, so that includes all of these guys here. Okay, so these guys here are somewhat stable. Um, these atoms need more neutrons to keep their nuclei stable, so it's starting to get crowded. If you look, um, you'll notice that there are more, quite a bit more neutrons than there are protons. And by the way, I don't have any idea what this 82 is. Don't write that down. Ignore that. Okay. So there are a lot more proton or not more neutrons now than protons. There needs to be more to ke to keep the number of protons stable, um, which means the nucleus is starting to get a little crowded. Okay. 21 through 82 are still stable, but only somewhat. Okay. And then we've got atoms with numbers that are greater than 83. So basically, 83 and greater. Um, all of these guys here really not stable okay you can't there's so many protons that you can't even fit enough neutrons in there to, to for there to be enough glue to hold those protons together okay so these atoms um, 83 to whatever are not stable so what happens when a nucleus is not stable particularly those again um, atoms with atomic numbers of 83 or higher. What happens? So we're going to talk now about unstable nuclei and radiation. Unstable nuclei release particles to become more stable. This is known as radiation. Okay? So what, remember, what's happening here is that the nucleus is just too crowded. So it gets rid of some particles, becomes more stable. And the particles that are being released are called radiation. So generally, isotopes that are much heavier or contain more neutrons than average or much lighter, containing fewer neutrons than average, are the, um, are the most likely to be radioactive. Okay. So unstable nuclei and radiation. There are three basic types of radioactive decay. Okay, there are five types of particles that can be released, and we'll be talking about that next. But there are three that we're going to call radioactive. We've got alpha, beta, and gamma. And again, there are other particles given off during radioactive decay, but the particles themselves are not radioactive. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, so you need to know a little bit about each of these types of radioactive decay. You've got alpha particles. They're made up of just two protons and two neutrons. So they look just like a helium nucleus. Helium, if you look at your periodic table, is made up of two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. An alpha particle is just two protons and two neutrons. So it looks like a helium nucleus. They are symbolized as 4,2-HE. They are positively charged. They've got a charge because there are no electrons, right? We've got two protons here, no electrons. So you end up with a positive charge. All right, alpha particles can only travel a few centimeters through the air. You could, you could block them by a piece of paper or your clothing, your skin, as long as there's no cuts in it. So this type of radiation does not pose a health threat, unless, of course, you were to, like, eat it or something. But, you know, as long as you don't do that, alpha radiation does not really pose a health threat. Okay, then we have beta particles. Beta particles are basically electrons. They are symbolized as 0, negative 1, E. Because they're electrons, they're negatively charged. Beta particles can pass through clothing and damage skin. Okay, so a beta particle, if it were to damage your skin, would be like a sunburn. Okay, it would kind of burn your skin, but like a sunburn. They are stopped by heavy, heavy clothing, metal foil, and wax. And we'll say they pose a very slight health threat. Because it can burn your skin like a sunburn, but that's about the extent. Da -na -na -na, the gamma rays. Gamma rays are not actually even particles. They're a form of light. They are symbolized as zero, zero gamma, which is sort of a cursive Y squiggly thing. They have no charge. Gamma rays are really bad. Okay, they can penetrate deeply into solid material. Really, the only things that can block them are concrete or lead. So we're going to say that gamma rays 
are very dangerous and pose a very serious health hazard. Okay, so you need to know the characteristics and the symbols of alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, so when an atom emits, which is a fancy word of saying releases, one of these kinds of radiation, it's said to be going to undergoing radioactive decay. And in our next lecture, we're going to talk a lot about radioactive decay. And that's it for today. Um, have a good one, and I'll see you tomorrow.